Hello and welcome back to another game review. My name is Saiken and today we're taking a look at Warhammer 40k Chaos Gate Demon Hunters, where you are taking over the Grey Knights, the most elite of Demon Hunters in a tactical simulation against the forces of Nurgle, the god of corruption and diseases. That is a tall task even for the most elite and prestigious of the Demon Hunters. Does the game, however, live up to its hype? Does it do the franchise a good service? And how well does it compare to other games in the tactical and strategy genre? I'm here to answer this question. And before we're diving right into the game review, I should say that, as always, I am judging games on a more uh, old school scoring, where a average game is a 5 to 6, a good game is a 7, a great game is an 8 out of 10. A game of the year type of game would be a 9 out of 10. And a genre defining once in a millennia or once in a decade game would be a 10 out of 10. So kind of a normal distribution. So don't be too upset if the scoring isn't as high as a normal other scores would go. So without further ado, let's jump right into it and structurally review this beautiful title. Which brings us to the first category, lore and background. And that is no small task in a title like Warhammer 40k. In a lore-rich environment, you need to really do your homework. And the game certainly has done that. When I look at lore and background, I am asking myself, does the game uh, compellingly describe uh, the environment and the answer is a resounding yes in this case. The Warhammer universe is properly described. Uh, the timing of the information and the pacing is both helping newcomers to the genre to understand the background as well as veterans of the War D uh, for Decay universe to appreciate the love for detail. Whether it is the individual uh, mm, seals that you put onto your uh, armor, whether it is the weapon choice, the just color coding or the utilization of the right verbiage, the references to a existing other events in the Warhammer 40k universe, the list is very, very long. So whoever has done the storytelling has done an excellent job in doing so. If I had to criticize it, I would potentially say two small points of improvement. Number one, uh, the game time of 150 hours for completionists is on the longer side. And I would say that sometimes less is more, a bit more compact gaming wouldn't have hurt uh, the experience. And secondly, some of the dialogues to a degree start becoming repetitive. Uh, the game uh, very accurately uh, de deprives or depictures an environment where all of the very strong and long-lived characters have a strong and non-agreeable way of interacting with one another. But once you have heard uh, the fights over and over, it gets old at some point, and I would have wanted a little bit more character development. Moving on to the next point. All right, looking into graphics and graphical user interface, which is an area where the game really shines. Let's start with graphics. The graphics, specifically the 3D modeling of all of your units and the enemy units is crisp and on point. I would say it is definitely state of the art in this regard. 3D modeling, very, very well done textures. All of the individual items look differently and with around 250 items and all of them having individual textures plus dozens and dozens and dozens of customization abilities, it is just really well overall presented. It feels natural and everything is flowing well together. The animations of the models come very cleanly together. All of the kill shots, the individual scenes that are being highlighted, the cinematics, all of that is just fantastic. On top of it, you get a very nice uh, 
camera um, and cinematic moments in between the missions where the game is just showcasing how well animated interactive games can work. The graphical user interface on, on the other hand is complementary to that. I can mostly say positive things about it. If I'm looking at the graphical user interface and tactical games in particular, I'm often asking myself, are they providing the necessary information that I need? Is it dense? Is it crisp? Is it on point? And I must say most of the time the answer in Warhammer 40k is yes. I truly appreciate the transparency that the game is giving whenever you're trying to shoot or whenever you're trying to analyze enemies you are typically greeted with very very clear indicators all of the zones uh, such as overwatch zones are being clearly outlined and that is the trademark and sign of a great strategy game the few improvements that i could have thought about are mainly related um, to quality of life improvements. The squad management in particular wasn't the hottest. Um, I found myself oftentimes scrolling through many similar characters, trying to find the ones that I would want for the mission. And that prolonged the whole process of setting up your team unnecessarily. I think in a more long war-esque fashion, having uh, pre-generated squads with pre-generated loadouts, you could simply improve that part of the game without losing any of its appeal. However, the game overall shines in this department and deserves nothing but praise. Which brings us nicely to sounds and sound effects. And boy, oh boy, the game delivers on that one. The game certainly takes it serious to underline a great environment with the right sounds and the right music. Whether it is the fully voiced characters, whether it is the good selection of voice actors, whether it is the fitting interaction between those characters or simply the good sound effects of all of the weapons, the game truly and surely underpins the experience with the right sounds. The one caveat here would be that from a music standpoint, the game could do a little bit more, but I never felt that there was too little of it. Whenever there was a tune or a little bit of a background playing, it was good. However, it could be a little bit better if I look at uh, titles like Wasteland 3, where the sound specifically in the battles just inspired uh, you to go forward. Here it is kind of more of a quieter environment and that is fine for the type of gritty environment that the game is trying to portray. Nonetheless, I think that a little bit more music could have gone a long way. Other than that, the game is very much on point with its audio and deserves praise in this scenario as well. Which nicely brings us to tactical gameplay, where a little bit of my criticism would lie as typical in the games. The tactical gameplay of the game is absolutely rock solid. You do have a good interaction of just three actions throughout the game. Uh, combined with a bit of quality of life features so that it is easy for you to go through a tactical interaction with multiple encounters. The different classes play and feel different, as different as you can imagine from an all uh, Space Marine chapter. But to be fair, maybe with the DLCs, as a disclaimer, I've only played the base game, the game would uh, get an enrichment in terms of classes. That being said, the actual tactical combat is good and is fun albeit a little bit repetitive at times. I would have wished that some of the missions would have seen a bit more variety. You do have five different, six different types of missions, and I think the game could have uh, benefited from a little bit more mission variety. Secondly, uh, my biggest criticism point in this compartment would be a horrible balancing. So, um, although there are a lot of good systems in the game, the game suffers a little bit from the second best or third best phenomena. 
specifically the action point piling as well as uh, the stunning mechanic outshine all of the other mechanics leaving them a little bit uh, as second best choices at, at best maybe even third best choices and i don't really understand why that happened because in my mind it is unclear how a team of developers can go through a process and not really listen to um, player feedback Specifically, if you have experienced playtesters that have played a lot of tactical games, um, ideas like mass um, action point gain through um, executions wouldn't have just gone through it. They might limit it to once or twice around so that it is still a mechanic, but clearly it is too strong for what it is trying to do. And if you then pile on on top of it, that there are special weapons and special mechanics that just fully embrace this play style, then you are simply asking for an imbalance. That being said, I have tried numerous teams and I have even come up with at least six or seven different very viable team compositions. So take my criticism with a grain of salt as really your, you can play whatever you want even on the hardest difficulty and still be successful as long as you do have a somewhat coherent concept of where you want to go with your team. I wouldn't call it great balancing in that uh, case. It is potentially more a question of the game overall being a tiny bit too easy um, even on the harder difficulties. So with that being said, the experience that uh, you will get from running through the game the first time will still be an excellent one. It took me a while to grasp all of uh, the concepts and I would say unless you're deliberately forcing yourself into uh, ultra powerful builds and therefore optimizing the fun of the game out of it for you, you do have the option to really play this game however you want and still have a satisfying outcome. Which brings us to replayability and naturally single player games, specifically those with a set storyline and the set environment will score a little bit lower on this end. I would nonetheless say that the game has done a good effort in order to make it a replayable or as replayable as possible. For starters, there are five bosses in the game, which um, however, you can only fight three of. So naturally, you might want to see the other bosses in your second playthrough. Secondly, specifically with the DLCs, there is a little bit of a replay option and you can still go through it. I would have wanted to see different scenarios. The game and the engine in particular has a very easy method of aligning itself to the Warhammer universe. And sometimes there are even references that the Ultramarines, for instance, are fighting against uh, um, World Eaters or that um, there is a org work ongoing and I wanted to participate in either of those. So allowing the option for modding in the game and allowing the option to generate other scenarios would have gone a long way. They however didn't do that which I think is a little bit of a short-sighted move. Maybe they didn't want uh, the title to kind of go further than it already has gotten. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter. There could have been more uh, content to it that would have made the whole uh, experience more enjoyable and more replayable. Overall, I would say there are decent choices. I can see myself coming back to the game, mainly due to the crisp tactical combat and uh, the nice look and feel of it. However, it wouldn't be a game like XCOM where the procedurally generated maps keep um, me so entertained that I would be coming back over and over again. I think that's a fair assessment for it, so let's take a look how the game overall concludes. So, if you ask yourself whether or not Warhammer 40k Chaos Gate is for you, I would say if you are a tactical game enthusiast and if you like the Warhammer universe, the answer cannot be a clearer yes. 
if you are looking for a new title and you are looking for a single player game with a great storyline, then I would still give you the recommendation to buy the game. Overall, I would give it 8.5 out of 10, which is a very good rating. The game encapsulates everything that the Warhammer uh, universe stands for. It has a deep, meaningful interaction. It has a good storyline. The tactical combat is fun, albeit slightly flawed due to the bad balancing. But since it is a single player game, that is only frustrating if you're looking for exceptional hard difficulties. And you can always um, achieve that by limiting yourself in other ways. The replayability of the game would be one of the few factors as well as uh, the quality of life and mod support that I would um, caution you about. But since the core product itself is so crisp and so much on point, I cannot uh, falter you for making the decision of buying Warhammer 40k Chaos Gate. Now, all there is left um, except me wishing you a good day is let me know in the comments down below if you do agree with uh, the assessment of this game, if you considered playing it and what were your experiences. Thanks a lot for watching guys and see you in the next game review.